I became blind at the age of 14. But there are many things that I can do. This is me cooking alone. <laughs> So let's start. Okay. <laughs> Did I cook well? Now she's your mom. Delicious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, well, uh, at least my daughter said it was delicious. <laughs> so, I enjoy cooking and dining uh, with good wine. <laughs> I think I have a keen sense of taste because I am blind. I love to challenge many things, and I can enjoy many things. But to tap unlimited, uh, my unlimited possibilities, I have been forcing myself to face challenges. I lost my sight at the age of 14 by hitting my left eye on the side of a swimming pool. Before then, I was dreaming to become an Olympic athlete. That had faded away. Studying was not my, you know, one of my favorite things until after I lost my sight. Well, the situation changed, and I, you know, forced myself to study harder. My first major challenge was reading textbooks. Back then, there were no personal computers, no internet, no smartphones. How did I uh, read textbooks? I had to frequently ask my brothers to read me textbooks, and I had to create my own books in Braille. Can you imagine? Of course, my brothers were not happy about it. And later, I noticed they were not always there whenever I needed them. I think they tried to stay away from me, and I don't blame them. Not just textbooks. I also wanted to read books, newspapers, magazines, and so on. Information accessibility was one of the largest challenges. I was not aware of it at that time, but this painful experience later led me to start working on the information accessibility technology. After bump stand detours, I joined IBM Research in 1985 and got to know cutting-edge technologies. And I thought to myself, how come there is no computer technology to create books in Braille? These amazing technologies must be able to also help people with limitations like myself. Then I started working for Braille digitalization, such as a Braille editing system, a Braille library network, and a Braille uh, dictionary system. Braille books then uh, became shareable via the net, even before the internet went public. Braille went digital in the late 1980s. Today, every student uh, with visually impaired can read textbooks by using their personal computers or mobile devices in braille or in voice. In the 90s, people around me started talking about the internet and web browsing. 
Somehow, I managed to access the web through an engineering capability in my laboratory. I remember the first time I went on the web. I was astonished. I could access newspapers at any time and every day. I could enjoy online shopping and check my bank account. I could even search for any information by myself. I knew it was going to offer us a completely new type of information resource. I desperately wanted to help everybody have access to the internet. So I developed new ways to convert text information on the web into voice. So please listen to this voice. Sindang Dong Tiak Baki Town. The sauce that is used differs by stores, and thus every Tiak Baki restaurant has its own unique flavors to offer. Some restaurant uses a mixture of gochujang red chili paste and chanjang fermented soybean sauce boiled to color caramel. Moreover, basic ingredients such as eggs, ramayin, dumplings, fish cake are primarily sold in a set menu, but customers can also customize the dish by adding or removing any toppings of their choice. Okay, sounds great. I want to keep listening. <laughs> and I want to go there tonight. Do you agree? Uh, please clap your hand if you agree. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, my development work quickly flourished as the product homepage reader in 1997, first made available in Japanese and later translated into 11 languages and one of them was Korean. I received many comments from the homepage reader users. One that I strongly remember said, homepage reader is a small window into the world. Information empowered us and changed our lives. So, how have information resources expanded for the blind? I witnessed throughout my career a dramatic change from paper to digital to the net. Before the 1980s, we only had paper bra uh, braille and tape-recorded books as our information resources. Two significant innovations changed the situation. One was braille digitalization, and the other breakthrough was voice-based web access. That opened up a new era for the blind. Today, smartphones provide us to access the web anytime, anywhere. The changes may be quite similar for other people, not just for the blind, but the impact on our lives was much larger than for other people. Information accessibility has dramatically improved. What comes next? The next challenge is the real world. It is still difficult for me to walk in unfamiliar places by myself. It is also difficult to enjoy shopping without a human assistant. In my case, uh, my daughter, who you just saw in the video, is the best coordinator. Uh, one of my dreams is to develop a shopping assisting technology that can give me an advice just like she does. Finding good restaurants has been uh, really difficult for anyone, but it's much harder for us. Visual information in the city is something that we always miss. Signs, shape and color of buildings, posters, and dogs which are approaching me. Why dogs? Because I'm so afraid of a dog. <laughs> 
So I hope to develop a technology which allows me that a dog is approaching me. Then I can be prepared. <laughs> there are so many technical challenges that we must overcome to achieve the real world accessibility. OK, let me show you the latest technologies that we are working on. 51 feet to the door and keep straight. Take the two doors to go out. The door is on your right. Nick is approaching. Looks so happy. Oh, hi, Nick. Hey, Chico. Uh, where are you going? You look so happy. Oh, well, my paper just got accepted. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Thanks. Wait, uh, how'd you know it was me and that I look happy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, hi. He is not talking to you, but on his phone. <laughs> Potato chips. Dark chocolate with almonds. You gained five pounds since yesterday. Please take apple instead of chocolate. Approaching. You are right. What do you want to buy? I want to buy cookies. Starting navigation to cookies. Please hold iPhone in front. Turn left 15 degrees. Two steps forward. Bit forward. You are in front of the cookies. Six kinds of cookies are there at left side. Second shelf from the top. Ritz Bits Peanut Butter. 140 calories. Oreo Mini, 130 calories. There are many ways to eat Oreo. Do you want to check recipes? Sure. Please buy my book on the right side of the top shelf. Cognitive Cooking with Chef Watson. Recipes for innovation for my BM and the Institute of Culinary Education. Okay. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. We call uh, the concept as Cognitive assistant. Cognitive assistant will augment missing or weakened abilities by understanding our surrounding world. This slide summarizes the base technologies. We need localization across indoor and outdoor environments uh, to enable navigation from shelves in a store to building and steel scale. The recognition for people's face can tell who he is, happy or not, um, or talking to me or not. It greatly helps me to be social. Object recognition in a store allows me to grab a target snack. Knowledge base allows the system to provide the personalized information, such as the best food for me to buy. And the interaction should be natural and contextual. Nick looks happy. These just three words really help me to be social. These technologies are all rapidly advancing. I strongly believe they will change our daily lives in the near future. Collaboration. Collaboration is the key to advance the cognitive assistant research. That is why we created an open source platform uh, with Carnegie Mellon University. We also made available our navigation app Navcog on App Store. If you are willing to work with us, uh, please check us at facebook.com slash Okay, 
Let me share my memory from the childhood. I used to watch a popular TV program when I was a child. The little bird on his shoulder is a robot, and it helps the boy by whispering everything around him. The bird had a telepathic uh, link uh, in the TV program. The bird had a telepathic link to the boy's mother, who had come from the different universe. Okay, it's an animated cartoon, but I have often thought about this little robot since I became a blind researcher. One of my dreams is to create this kind of bird. If a small device on my shoulder could recognize everything around me, from a parked bicycle, who's in a meeting room, and color combinations of clothing. It could also uh, tell me if you are following me, if you look sleepy or boring now, <laughs> and of course, if you are enjoying. Um, are you following me, uh, by the way? <laughs> if so, uh, could you clap your hand? Thank you, thank you so much. So, I believe this robot is a model for the blind, a tool to sense and make sense of the world. So, can we achieve such a bird with modern technologies? The answer is yes. This is me following an autonomous mobile robot. This robot is called Cobot, developed at Carnegie Mellon University Robotics Institute. It has a novel localization algorithm based on depth images, which enables it to robustly navigate in the Carnegie Mellon University campus buildings, performing item transportation and escort service tasks. Since 2013, they have um, already autonomously traveled for more than 1,000 kilometers. The cobot is a foundation for creating a new uh, assisting robot, which will help us walk around, uh, shop around, and enjoy the surrounding views. In 2020, the Japanese government plans to hold a robot competition. The same year as the 2020 Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games will be held in Tokyo. It would be wonderful to see a cognitive assisting robot at the competition. Technologies have helped me make some dreams come true. Yet, there are more things that I'm dreaming about. I want to travel all over the world by myself. I want to find a nice restaurant by myself. I want to select good wines in a winery by myself. I want to walk around a museum to enjoy artworks by myself. And, of course, I want to visit my friends all over the world by myself. I hope to realize the goal with you, because collaboration is the key. We can make the impossible possible together by never giving up. Let's work together. Thank you very much.